Huntington Beach State Park is where we are to start this video. When looking to the northeast, you can see Garden City Beach, and past that, you can see the Dirty Myrtle. Ugh, who wants to go there? Well, we'll be far away from all of that drama in this video. Hallelujah to that, right? The winding river that you see here is Oak Creek, which is a beautiful sight. This is all a protected wetland area that sits between South Carolina's Grand Strand and the mainland. Another wetlands area lies just northwest of here along the Waccamaw River. It really is a beautiful area once you get away from Myrtle Beach, especially towards the southwest, which is where we are. Merle's Inlet lies on the north side of the waterway that's called Merle's Inlet, and it sits right around here. You won't find any of those towering hotels or luxury condos over here, as over the years they've made it a point in Merle's Inlet to keep the natural beauty alive in the area. Merle's Inlet is a census-designated place that lies on the edge of Georgetown County. There are two main roads that go through the CDP, those being US-17 and Business Route US-17. Go any further northeast and you're in Horry County. There's plenty of ways that you can enjoy the natural beauty around here, whether it's the Merle's Inlet marsh walk, kayaking, canoeing, or some other type of boating, or maybe fishing. And of course, there's the beach, which is only a few minutes away. They call Merle's Inlet the seafood capital of South Carolina. And I got to tell you, I didn't even know that was a thing when I was here back in January of 22. But I remember eating at this place here, which is called Graham's Landing. And it was a really good spot. So if you're ever in the area and you like seafood, you should give them a try. Outside of all the seafood restaurants, it's really quiet back in here. The residential areas are made up of large single-family homes, and it's one of the nicer areas to live in the Myrtle Beach area. We'll get into all of the reasons as to why this is such a nice area to live in later in the video. Really quick, as if you enjoy seeing this type of video, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. YouTube forces us creators to beg for likes and subs as their algorithm is based on that type of interaction, so yeah, make sure you're smashing that like button, people. Just like I smashed right into that meal that I had at Graham's Landing. Lastly, if you've ever been to Merle's Inlet and you have a memory that you'd like to share, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Moving on now, as Merle's Inlet has a surprisingly rich history for not even being an incorporated town, village, or a city. The name comes from the original founder, John Morrill, who is an English colonist. Not sure why the place would choose the name from a particular person, but not spell their name exactly like it, but it is what it is. As early as 1731, Merle's Inlet became a bustling shipping center. Rice, cotton, and other farm products would be shipped from here to Great Britain and the northern colonies. By the 1800s, local plantations would produce nearly 47 million pounds of rice. Things weren't all good and dandy during those days for this community, though, as it was the site of some battles during the Civil War. Merle's Inlet was a target due to their product being in high demand with buyers in Great Britain and the northern colonies. In 1863, Admiral John Dahlgren of the U.S. South Atlantic Blockading Squadron sent six warships and hundreds of troops to destroy Merle's Inlet, but they were unsuccessful. However, the next year... Northerners invaded and destroyed 2,000 bushels of salt at a salt works that was owned by the Confederates. After slavery was abolished following the Civil War, the area's plantations ceased production. Shipping activity declined, and it's said that a few hurricanes came through and destroyed much of the land. It wasn't until three more decades or so until the area started to see development again. In 1894, then-President Grover Cleveland came to the area for a duck hunt, and that put Merle's Inlet back on the map. Following that, during the early 1900s, Northerners started to buy up the abandoned plantations, and among this new crowd was Hispanic scholar Archer Huntington and his wife Anna Hyatt Huntington, who was known for her art sculptures. 
The couple came from New York in 1930 and purchased the property that became Brook Green Gardens, and the state park along the coast was named after them. At the end of the video, we'll be driving through both Huntington Beach State Park and Brook Green Gardens. In the 1950s, Merle's Inlet received the name of being the seafood capital of South Carolina, and that's been their marketing slogan ever since. Lastly, capping off the historic timeline of Merle's Inlet is that in 1980, the Historic District was established, which includes a collection of about 37 buildings. On to the economic stats as Merle's Inlet is a part of the Myrtle Beach metro area. Sorry, people. You can run from the dirty Myrtle, but you can't hide. Georgetown County is one of three counties that make up the metro area, the other two being Brunswick and, of course, Horry County. Merle's Inlet is about 13 miles southwest of Myrtle Beach, and today it's home to 9,700 people, with a median household income of nearly $68,000 per year. 39% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $289,000, while the poverty rate is 8.9%. You can see that right next to it is the economic stats for Georgetown County, and Merle's Inlet, based off of these stats, appears to be one of the nicer areas to live in Georgetown County. Right here is a nice collection of seafood restaurants, but now onto the crime stats as Merle's Inlet sees a rate below average in both violent and property crimes, so that's all good and dandy. Not only is it good and dandy, but it's particularly good and dandy for the Myrtle Beach area, as the crime rates throughout this metro area are surprisingly sky high. Well anyway, back here behind this parking lot is where you can access the Myrtle's Inlet Marsh Walk, which is one of the main attractions in Myrtle Beach. This area sort of serves as the unofficial downtown of Myrtle's Inlet, I would say, as it's where most of the popular restaurants are in the community. With that said, I'll be heading down this road for a few more minutes before switching over to driving through Huntington Beach State Park and Brook Green Gardens, which are nice places to visit if you're ever in the area. At least I thought so. I can tell you that if I was here on vacation during the warmer months, I would much rather spend time down here and at the beach in Huntington Beach State Park than in Myrtle Beach, that's for sure. So now we're about to leave Merle's Inlet and we're entering Garden City, which is in Horry County. So now I'm going to switch the footage back over to Huntington Beach State Park, show some more of the beach and what that looks like. And then I'm going to be driving through the park before heading over to Brook Green Gardens.
So this is Brook Green Gardens, which is another place that's worth checking out if you're in the area. I didn't get to show much of the place in this video, but you can buy a ticket for the gardens and it'll be good for the weekend. With that said, it's that time, people. You can't always trust the Wi-Fi speeds at your hotel, and you can't always trust the pizza at a gas station, but you can always trust Chris's livability score. When it comes to the education, Merrill's Inlet is a part of the Georgetown County School District. Nearby Waccamaw High School is one of the better high schools in the Myrtle Beach area. The school performs decently well, but it could be better. Education gets a 13 out of 20. Crime is a non-issue in Merrill's Inlet, but the rates could be lower. It gets a 17 out of 20. There really isn't much of a downtown in Merrill's Inlet. However, there is sort of a makeshift downtown area, if you will. It's made up of mostly seafood restaurants, but I was disappointed that I didn't see any sidewalks along the main drag when we went through the heart of Merrill's Inlet. Downtown gets a 4 out of 20. The area's economy is nothing special. I've gone over it in mostly every other video that I've made on the Myrtle Beach area. Outside of tourism, this area doesn't have much going for it currently. But because Merrill's Inlet has a wealthier population base than most of the other communities around here, the economy gets an 11 out of 20. The next category is recreational opportunities, especially if you like water, it gets a 15 out of 20. The history of Merle's Inlet was impressive, going all the way back to 1731, including Civil War battles that took place here. It gets a 15 out of 20. Next up is amenities, and those are far and few in between here. I didn't go on the main US Highway 17 through town in this video, as there are a few things there, but for the most part, you have to head north into Myrtle Beach to get most things. Amenities gets an 8 out of 20. The cost of living in Merrill's Inlet is not a huge issue. The problem is that the demand to live here is high, but there's only so much housing available. There's definitely cheaper options elsewhere in the Myrtle Beach area, but there's a few affordable options here too, so I'll give it a 13 out of 20. All in all, the Chris livability score for Merrill's Inlet, South Carolina is 96 out of 100, which places right in the middle of all of the places that I've done this for so far. Overall, I was impressed with Merle's Inlet. I remember that I really enjoyed the restaurant that I checked out here while I was in town, and I thought that it was a really beautiful area. Far enough away from the Dirty Myrtle to steer clear of all that drama, but close enough to enjoy at least some of the bigger city-like amenities. Not to mention a strong beach culture in Myrtle Beach that I'm sure is fun to hit up once in a while, just as long as you don't have to live with it. That's why you live outside of it, in a place like Merle's Inlet. Well, with that said, I do end the video here. And do me a favor, as if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here, can be found in my Myrtle Beach playlist, my South Carolina playlist, or in my Atlantic Ocean Cities and Towns playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!